So in my quest to learn more about Temple OS and its compiler and the kernel, I've learned a lot more about assembly language. So here I have a regular C function called hello world, and it just calls, or it just displays the screen hello world, or prints. So if I run it, you can see it does just that. But if we were to unassemble this function, you can see uh, there's this code, and it's called assembly code. And so each one of these instructions is like a mnemonic, and it represents uh, a machine instruction that the CPU is running. And so these are as close as possible as you can get to writing exactly what's running on the processor. So these will be converted into binary. So how do computers compute? So there's multiple types of memory it can use. It can use a register, RAM, or a hard drive. And it does its calculations with the AOU, which does its math and logical operations. So registers are uh, a way to store a value temporarily as you move it around between the ALU, the RAM, and the hard drive. So if you were doing some uh, math with your calculator, a register would be like if you tried to remember the value that your calculator returned to put it into another calculation. So register is just very short-term memory for storing a value, and it usually can only store 64 bits of data on a 64-bit machine. So then you have your RAM, your random access memory. This is, uh, imagine it like a piece of scratch paper where you can, it's, it's also temporary, um, and you can store more things on it. And so um, in RAM, it's one long contiguous block of um, bytes that you can use however you'd like. So the operating system tends to use the first 640 kilobytes for the kernel code, and then from the first 640 kilobytes to 2 gigabytes, it stores all of the regular um, code. And so this RAM is uh, separated into stack and heap memory, but we'll go over that later. And then finally, we have the hard drive. The hard drive is where you store your final results. On your hard drive, this is kind of a uh, simplistic breakdown but you have a table of contents that tells you where in memory each file is. And the files don't necessarily have to be all one each after another. So you can have a file split up into parts. So as you can see here in my hypothetical drawing, we have file one split up into part A, B, and C, and we have file two in the middle there. And so um, there's multiple functions in uh, Temple OS that we can use to write files. So now let's go back to a RAM. So a RAM, we have heat memory and stack memory. So heat memory is kind of like um, a bulletin board. You can write your results anywhere on the board, but you have to remember where you put those results when you need to read back from them. Then there's also the stack. So the stack starts at the very top of memory, and it grows downwards. And so what a stack is is um, kind of like a stack of papers. And, you put, and as you do your calculations, you put your values on the stack, and then you pull them off the stack. So let's say we want to do some simple math. We want to do 10 plus 20 times 30 plus 5. So we have to go through the order of operations. We have to go through PEMDAS, which means we have to multiply 20 and 30 first. So the first step would be multiply 20 times 30. Then we would have to save the result. And then we would have to add that result to 5 and then add that result to 10. So what we can do is put these values onto the stack. So we can put 5 at the bottom of the stack. We'll put it on first. It's called pushing to the stack when you put a value on the stack. Then we'll put 10 on the stack. Then we'll put 20 on the stack. And then we'll put 30 on the stack. So what our computer can do is it can pull off the two top values of the stack, so 30 and 20. So we, and we can uh, take off these values off the stack, put them into a register, and then send them to the AOU. So we can do pop RSI, and that will copy off the top value of the register, or the top value of the stack into the register. So now RSI has a value of 30. And then we can do pop RDI, and now it will pop off the top value of the stack, and now RDI has a value of 20. And then we can just do some simple a simple calculation with the AOU. So we could do add RSI, RDI, and the final result is stored back in RSI. And now we can pop that value back onto the stack. Or sorry, not pop, we can push it onto the stack. So we can do push RSI, and now this final value 50 is on the stack. 
And now we can do the same thing. We can do we can pop off the two values in the RSI and RDI, and then we can um, add them together, uh, and then we'll get 60 on the stack. And or, and then we'll do that again, and then we'll get 65 on the stack. Oh, I just realized I said add for the first instruction. I meant multiply, but you get the idea. All right, so what if we want to make an add function in assembly? So here I have an example of what that add function might look like in C. So we have uh, two arguments, and then we just return argument one plus argument two. So when this function is called, the code will put the two arguments on the stack. So we'll always put the last argument first. So go, so it puts argument two on, and that's eight bytes because it's a 64-bit integer. And then it puts argument one on the stack. And that is eight bytes. So now we can take it from here. So let's make start writing our assembly code. Now you can write assembly code in whatever uh, space you want. You could write it in your regular C functions. Um, but if you but I'm just gonna put it in the ASM function. And we'll make our own function name, we'll call it add. And as you can see, I put the underscore beforehand that indicates that we want to call it from C. So now the first step is to save all of the registers we want to modify into the stack. And then we're, we'll return the values to those registers after we're done with the function. So let's start by pushing our stack frame uh, RBP. So now we've put the previous RBP into here, or into the stack. Um, and then we can set RBP to the current stack pointer, which is RSP. So RSP uh, is is uh, right in front of this value in the stack. So that means now that our RBP, our stack frame, is pointing to this position on the stack. So now let's uh, clear out the RSI and the RDI register. So we'll put those on the stack, you know, just in case there's anything important in them. So now we have on our stack we have stored RSI and RDI. Sorry, the previous values of them. And now let's clear out RSI and RDI. So we can do that with an XOR function, or yeah, an XOR instruction, and we'll feed in the same register name, like so. And the reason why we do this is an XOR uh, is a comparison between two binary numbers. So if we had two binary numbers, such as 1001 and 1000, what it does is it checks and sees if the bit is the same in both. And if it's the same, it's a 0. And if it's different, it's a 1. And so because you're comparing the same register to itself, then of course both registers are going to have the exact same value. And the end result is going to be all zeros. So that's a good way of clearing out those two registers. Now we can move um, our value from the stack into our register so that we can do the math. So let's do RSI 16 RBP. All right, so in this case, uh, RBP is actually a pointer. It's pointing to an area in memory on the stack. And so if we put these brackets around it, it means we want to get the value that that pointer is pointing to. And so the 16 beforehand indicates the offset from this pointer value of the value we want to copy into RSI. So if RBP is here, then if we go up 16 bytes, then we get to argument one. So this means we want to copy argument one off the stack into RSI. And we can do the same for RDI. And we'll just use we'll just take 24, the 24th bit or 24 bytes back into the stack. So now let's add these two values together. So we can do add 
RSI, RDI. So the value uh, of RSI and RDI is, I mean, after RSI and RDI are added together, they're saved into RSI. So now what we have to do is we have to move RAX, or we have to move uh, RSI into RAX. So RAX is the return register. Uh, whatever your return value is, you put it in that register. And now we can clean up our uh, values. So we have to pop off all of these values off of the stack. So we first do pop uh, RDI. So we pop RDI off the stack. And we want to pop our SI off the stack. And then we pop RS, our BP off of the stack. And now that means the RBP is set to wherever it was before, probably up here somewhere. And so now we've reset all of these registers back to what they were before the function was called. Now we can finally return. So we can do ret1, and we'll do 16. So ret1 means as we're when we're jumping back to the code, uh, it means we have two arguments, and the arguments add up to 16 bytes. So that jumps back. And now if we wanted to turn our assembly uh, function into something that can be called from C, we can use the extern. So we can use extern add i64 add i64a i64b. And now we can call this add function we just made. So we can do uh, the value of 10 plus 20 is, and then we can use the percentage uh, d, and then put in our function. So what this, what, what this is going to do is it's going to print a uh, string, and then it's going to replace this last part of the string with um, whatever value this is here. So let's add a backslash n so that it uh, has an, uh, what's it called, an enter or a new line at the end of our string. Now we can press F5 to run it, and you can see the value of 10 plus 20 is 30. So if you're curious to see how um, how this function is being called, we can actually unassemble another function calling this function. So for example, we can make call function example, and we'll do So we've just made a simple function, and inside this function, it's printing a string, and the value it's printing in that string is the is the result of our add function. So now we can unassemble this function with the unassemble function function. <laughs> so call function example. So we're putting the function name inside of quotes because it's retrieving it from the symbol table. Now if we do F5. We can see our unassembled function. So you can see it's done. This this function has done the exact same thing that our function has done. So you can see it pushes RBP uh, onto the stack, and then you can see it pushes on two values. So it pushes on 14 and 0a. So this is a hexadecimal. So hexadecimal numbers don't go up to nine. They go up to f. So it goes. So rather than going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then overflowing to 10, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, and then it goes over. So A in this situation is uh, means 10 and 14 means 20. So you can see we pushed on 20 and 14 onto the stack. Now, the reason why uh, we had to clear the registers earlier is if you notice if you notice here it's actually only pushing on a byte onto the stack. So when you copy over this byte it's going to copy over the first byte 
and then the seven bytes after into this value, into RSI or RDI, and then you'll end up with a weird number that's not the correct number. So that's why we had to clear these two registers before we loaded these values in. So you can see it's pushed these two arguments on the stack, and then it just calls our add function. And then um, we feed these values into the print function. So you can see this right here, this uh, string of values is actually our um, string that we just made. So the string that we're using right here, uh, the percentage D and backslash N, um, it's converted, here, here it is in hexadecimal. So every each, each one of these two uh, numbers represents one character here because each character is a byte large. And then you just put that into the print function. So something interesting I found out about the print function is I was curious to know why you can make a print function and then just put in as many extra arguments as you felt like. And the way the compiler actually does it is it is it um, pushes on the number of arguments that the print function is going to need onto the stack. So this push function right here, it will replace it with a two if I wanted to put two values on the stack. So now if we ran the code, you can see it's push, it, it, it's showing that we're gonna put two arguments in and then um, it will just take the previous two arguments off of the stack. So that's just about it um, with creating functions and calling functions in Temple OS, uh, or just about any other uh, computer you might be writing assembly code for. So good luck with your programming, and I'll see you next time.